Good morning, Saints Church. Uh, it's so good to be with you whenever you're watching. Um, if you have your Bibles, why don't you go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. Uh, we're going to pick up a scripture there in verse 20, and we're continuing our series on saints anatomy. And today I want to talk to you about what it means to be set apart, not set aside. And in Timothy, uh, he's getting some instruction from Paul uh, about what's going on in the church and what's happening. And we start out like this. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 to 21, it says, But in a great house... There are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor, some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Why don't we pray? Heavenly Father, I thank you that your word, it's powerful, it's alive, it's living, it speaks to us. Uh, So God, we trust to take it into our hearts and see what you want to grow in us and through us as your people. In Jesus' name. Amen. I wanted to start today and ask you a question that might seem a little bit odd coming from a pastor, but uh, the question that's been rolling around and ringing around is, what in the world is the problem with church? Because often, maybe you've been in church for a long time, you know it's not perfect, you've been an outsider looking in to see what church is like, And there is some crazy stuff that happens. There is uh, some broken stuff that happens. There's some really cool things that happen. But uh, all throughout uh, time, and when we look at church and we look at the gathering of the saints, and God calls imperfect people together, and we somehow expect it to be perfect, but a lot of times it leaves us wondering what's going on and what are we supposed to do in it. And in this scripture that Paul writes to Timothy, one of the things that he's dealing with is some things that were happening. Now, if we take this scripture, this context, he says here, he says, in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but of wood and clay, some for good purposes, some for bad. And what he's saying is there is in a great house, many useful utensils, vessels, and really what we're talking about is people. But he's trying to frame what has been happening in this book because Timothy has to navigate some of these things where he's wondering, what is going on right now? There are people that are getting caught up in godless discussions. There are people that have deserted the truth, it says. There are people that are actually uh, spreading untrue doctrines, even within the walls of the church. And, and, And Paul's trying to say, but the word of God stands true. What God says is still true. And he says, you know what? In God's house, we have to be those that are prepared, set apart, called of God, because even in amongst God's house and God's people, there is a choice and there is a call and purpose of God, but things don't always go perfect. Often I think we wonder why that if the place that God of God's house is so great, why isn't it perfect? Why does it have so many struggles? Why does it have so many failures? But the truth remains that God loves his people. He loves his house. The gathering of the saints is not to be forsaken. The Bible says that, that we're not to forsake uh, being together and, and being his people. There's a body that he's building and God loves his body and his church and his people. Uh, You know, it shows us that in this scripture that there were some things going on that weren't perfect, but in a house, a great house, there are many vessels and they can be used for different purposes. But as Jesus followers, we use this word saint. As a church, we've started using the word saint as our church name, as the call of who we're supposed to be. And uh, in God's house, it's a, a great house. There's many vessels, but not only are we called to be saints, but we are literally called to be what a saint is. And that's a set apart one, a holy one, someone who has been uh, marked for a purpose, has been set apart. But often in our lives, sometimes I think that we, uh, we, we look at our lives and we see this challenge to live set apart in Jesus as kind of a tricky thing because uh, I think we resist this call at times. I think we don't always want to live differently than the rest of the world. I think some of us actually struggle with uh, the fact and the reality that we aren't supposed to be just like everybody else. And from the time we're really young, we try to blend in, we try to fit in, and and we want to be liked, and we want to be known for the right things. But often in life and in the call of Jesus, we are called to be different, to be set apart. 
And, and, and what I want us to know today is a few things. There is a difference between being set apart and being set aside. When it comes to the call of Jesus to follow him. There's a difference between being set apart and being set aside. Jesus calls us to set us apart because he wants to do something in us and through us. But in our lives, a lot of times we're like, okay, great. Jesus, you saved me. I love you. You're gracious. Now, would you put me on the shelf, protect me, keep me nice until you come back? I don't want any bang-ups, hang-ups. I don't want any bumps, bruises. I want to look pretty, be special because that's who I am because Jesus loves me. And we kind of put ourselves on the sidelines and take ourselves out. But Jesus actually called us into something and we were set apart, not set aside. I think of a china cabinet. Uh, they always like kind of were this conundrum for me. Like why do we have dishes that are only used at certain times when it's special? But then the reality is, is when was that time ever special enough? Why do we have towels that don't get used in uh, certain bathrooms as hand towels. Well, those are for the guests, you know. There, there, and, and there is something about keeping some things nice and stuff. But Jesus didn't save us to keep us nice, pretty, and hold us off till He returns. He actually set us apart, not set us aside. And a lot of times, some of us take ourselves out. We're like, "Good, I'm good now. I, I, I can live, and I can just." you know, try and scrape by and not have to worry too much about things and hopefully I make it to the other side to eternity and I'll come out unscathed. And there was this parable that Jesus used in the Gospel of Matthew, the parable of the talents. And there were these guys that were given uh, five talents, 10 talents, one talent. And he basically invested in them and what they did with that investment determined what their future looked like. And one of the phrases that always got me in this story, if you want to read it, it's in Matthew 25, but in verse 18, it says, but there was a servant who received one bag of gold or talent. He dug a hole in the ground and he hid the master's money for safekeeping. Often, I think sometimes in our life, when we receive Jesus, when we receive his grace, we actually want to set the investment, the gifts, talents, abilities he's put in us aside, because whether it's for fear or insecurity, whether it's maybe that we don't understand fully the plan of the master, we don't know the next steps, we set ourselves out or aside because we want to be safe. But Jesus didn't set us aside. He set us apart because he wanted to use us in our lives. You see, being set apart is intentional and it's for a purpose. See, so when we know that we're set aside, we're not set aside, we're set apart. Uh, when we know that being set apart is for an intention and a purpose, it starts to change things. Often in scripture, we hear this word vessels. Vessels speak of something that holds something. A vessel would be like this cup that holds my coffee or uh, a jar that holds something else or a container. And, and the thing about containers is they are used to hold things, but they're also used to pour things out of, to distribute. If you just hold something forever, the value stops in containing it, but Jesus sets us aside or sets us apart for a purpose, and he wants us to be intentional about being vessels, instruments, utensils that serve a purpose and that are meant to be used. 2 Timothy 2, verse uh, 2, uh, 20, 21 says this, and you will be ready for the master to use you for every good work. I don't know if we get this, that as the called out ones, as the set apart ones, we're actually supposed to be useful to the master. We're supposed to be ready to be used. We're supposed to be ready to be filled up and poured out. There's another story in the Old Testament in 2 Kings. Elisha comes to this widow's house and uh, she's running out of groceries. She's got no food left. And uh, Elisha's saying, well, what do you have that can be used right now? And she says, not much. And he says this, it's, it's this crazy scripture but I think it pulls this point home where in 2 Kings 4, verse 3, it says this. He said, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors. Empty vessels do not just gather a few. And so she goes and she gathers all these vessels and she starts filling them up, filling them up. And then she is able to sell what is filled in those vessels or she is able to use it to bring life 
and to bring hope and to bring future to her life and her son's life. And, and I think this is kind of the way Jesus sees our lives. We've been called out. We've been set apart. And God is saying, would you let me borrow your life, your coming, your going, your every day, your everything that as I pour into you and as I fill you up, that there might be life spilled over and poured out and carried to so many people that don't understand what they could find in Jesus. You see, being a set-apart one is about being ready to be used, to be filled up for a purpose, to be poured out to accomplish the things that Jesus wants to accomplish. But the truth of the matter is, we also need to understand and realize is that not everyone who is called to live set-apart will choose to live chosen. In the Gospel of Matthew, there was another story in Matthew 22, and the parable kind of ends with this one phrase, Matthew 22, 14. It says, for many are called, but few are chosen. And it kind of seems like this unfair thing that it's like, well, are you saying Jesus is going to just keep calling all of us, calling all of us, and it's going to be a shot in the dark at the end of the day that, you know, some are going to make the cut and some aren't? No, I actually believe that we have a constant, continual choice in our walk with Jesus to be set apart and to live the life that he calls us into. It is by the grace of Jesus that we're saved, we're brought in, we're called to him, we're called to become the saints, the set apart ones, but it's actually a daily choice to live a chosen life, to live out the plan, the purpose, and the call that he has for us. So what does this mean for you and me? Truthfully, as we follow Jesus, the challenge is always to live different. The challenge is to be countercultural, to live set apart lives. And if that's what saints are supposed to do, that's what we should aspire to lean into. We, we, we want to be those that are set apart for purpose, that choose to live and be poured out for the things that Jesus calls us into, to live a life that is useful to our master. But what does that mean for us? Well, in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it says this, Brothers and sisters, in light of all that I've shared of you about God's mercies, I urge you to offer your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice to God. A sacred offering that brings him pleasure, and this is your reasonable and essential worship. You know, there is a call for all of us. There is a call for the saints around the world. There is a call for the saints in our community to live set apart, to live on purpose, to live like we were chosen to do something incredible for the kingdom of God, to live like every day matters. And if we're going to live a set-apart life as saints, I think one of the things we need to realize is there are some responses that we can bring into our lives, and we can respond to living set-apart in three ways. The first one is this. I want to challenge us to respond by leaning in. We have to offer ourselves to live set-apart. It's a choice that we get to make. The Passion Translation of Romans chapter 12, verse 1 says, Beloved friends, what are... What should be our proper response to God's marvelous mercies? To surrender yourselves. That surrender word is a tough one because uh, we want to be God's sacred, living sacrifice. And and if we're going to surrender, if we're going to lean in to being the set-apart ones, the saints, we need to surrender so much of ourselves. And it's going to take trust to lean into all the things that God has for us because we won't always understand them. But we can only see what God wants to do when we lean in and we let him use us as we live set apart. In Corinthians, it's written like this. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7, it says, we now have this light shining in our hearts. There's a song when we were kids, I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. And it's like, there is this shining joy and grace and peace of Jesus. But for some of us, it's so far down. It's in our hearts. But 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7 says, But we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. It means our lives can be broken. It means that there is a vessel. There is, we are simply the container of the good things that God is doing. And it makes it clear that our great power is from God and it's not 
from ourselves. And we need to challenge ourselves sometimes. If we're going to live set apart, if we're going to be the saints, we need to lean in and offer ourselves to surrender, to be a part of what God calls us to. The second thing I think we can do as saints, and this is a challenge, is uh, I was just thinking over this phrase. It's like, how do we be reasonably ready? Because this language of set apart kind of shows us that we're not used all day, every day, in every situation, and we can be, but there, there is a readiness that has to come in our hearts, in our lives for when God wants to pour out. So that involves, are we being filled up? Are we growing? Are we being encouraged? Are we uh, offering ourselves to God? But being reasonably ready, Romans 12, 1 in the New King James says, uh, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Can I tell you in light of all that Jesus has done for you and me, it is only a reasonable request and ask that we would be ready when he calls, that we would be prepared to do the things that he calls us to do. It isn't always easy to be set apart, to be a living sacrifice, because sometimes when you're a living sacrifice, you want to get off the altar. You want to do the things that you want to do. You don't understand what God is doing. But we want to be those that respond reasonably and say, Jesus, because of who you are, because of your great love for me, I want to be prepared and ready when you call me. Because God, you used other people, you used other things so I could encounter you. And God, I'm going to be ready for you to use me, to use my life so other people can encounter you. This is what Paul was talking to Timothy about. He says, you know, we need to be useful to the master, but we need to be prepared for every good work. We are not saved by good works, but we need to be prepared for the good works that Jesus calls us to do because we have been set apart to reveal Jesus to those around us. But the last thing we can do, saints, if we're going to live this set-apart life, I, I think this is one of the toughest ones for us, but it's, it's a huge call. And one of the responses that we should have in our hearts and in our lives continually is that we cleanse ourselves. Or another way of saying it is we keep ourselves pure. The ESV says this, 2 Timothy 2.21, Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. The tough part about this phrase is that it says this. It doesn't say if anyone is miraculously changed and uh, God delivers them from everything. No, no, it says if anyone would cleanse himself, keep themselves pure. There is this aspect of as we grow and as we walk with Jesus, what are we taking in? What are we letting affect our lives? What are the attitudes that come out? What are the actions that come out, good or bad? There is a choice to cleanse ourselves from things that would cause us to walk down paths of impurity, uh, to keep ourselves clean in our hearts, our motives, our attitudes, whatever area it is. But When we say, God, I am going to make a choice to cleanse myself. And Jesus, I need your help because I am not perfect. Even Paul said this. Sometimes I do the things that I don't want to do, but I I want to make a choice to live a set-apart life. And I'm going to continually work at cleansing myself, cleansing my heart, cleansing my lips, cleansing my hands, my motives, my actions, so I can be ready for you to use me. And the encouraging thing about this is that we don't have to do it alone, but we do have to make the choice. Come on, we are called as God's people to live in Christ, set apart from the world, but we're not set aside. We're not waiting for the return of Jesus, hoping we get out unscathed. We got a job to do. We have purpose. We have a call. We have things that God has put in us that we are called to pour out to reveal Jesus to people around us. And when we keep ourselves pure, when we keep ourselves ready, when we lean into what God wants to do, we can live the life of a saint. We can live set apart. 
And Jesus will keep leading us one step at a time.